if for some reason, and I say that very loosely, if for some reason your call manager server has a public facing IP address. Does anybody have that? I'm, I'm just kind of curious. Not a wrong, wrong question or answer, but uh, does anybody have a call manager server that has a public IP address on it? All right, so Scott says he does. And then John says, hey, uh, will it touch uh, touch NAT or touch cube? Okay, so there's there's a different, there's a couple of different scenarios here, right? And kind of jumping the gun a little bit, majority of my students, and again, kind of look at the chat, they say no. And the general consensus here is like, wait a minute, that's a server. If it's exposed to the internet, that could be bad, and it can be bad, right? It's like putting any other server on the internet. If it has a public-facing IP address, that is considered a security issue, all right? Um, but sometimes you need that. Like in Scott's scenario, um, use your hosted IPT. So if you have a, a connection out to an ITSP, an internet telemetry service provider, still, in my deployments, I always put it behind uh, you know, a firewall. In ASA, um, it could also be VCS, it could be Cube, right? Cisco UBE, a router. And that way, you're, you're masking you know, the IP address of your call manager, but there may be a scenario like Scott has where it's a direct connection. So we will talk about that a little bit, but we don't get too crazy with, you know, how do you configure that? I mean, we don't even talk about how to configure that in this course. We could, um, but that's more of a route switch scenario. Same with security. We don't get into ACLs or things like that. Um, in this class, really the kind of fix for that is if you have a public facing call manager and you don't, and you want to secure it, what do you do? You put either VCS um, put it in the DMZ, all right, or put uh, put a cube in front of it. There's that. Again, that's a whole different topic. We'll get there at some point in time in the class. So looking at our topology, we'll see this topology quite a bit in this course. This is Cisco's topology. So kind of just summarizing everything we looked at in the outline, we have a couple things here, right? So we have a main site or a branch site. doesn't matter if the branch site is one site or 100 sites. Ideally, they're interconnected via WAN, some flavor. So um, we do get away from talking about old technologies like frame relay, if you're rocking frame relay still, um, God bless you, uh, but hopefully you're not. Uh, probably more likely you've got a, uh, an MPLS cloud, uh, an MPLS cloud somewhere out there that you're, uh, maybe got some layer two, layer three VPNs site to site. But in our scenario here, we have issues with availability. So in this type of deployment, the assumption is, look at my pen, is that your phones at your branch location are registering through the WAN. So if we do have availability issues here with the WAN, that causes an issue with our phones over here. All right, and we'll talk about what that is. Uh, there's some quality bandwidth issues based on how much bandwidth we have through the WAN. All right, and then that's when we look at NAT security issues, and that would be if you happen to have a call manager that has a public-facing IP address. 